Well, this is going to be great. Welcome to the White House Pod oh, oh. with David A. R. White. All right, uh, from the White House today um, on the West Coast, for the record, uh, we're very excited um, to have Angelica Bridges with us. Uh, Angelica, you have quite a career over the span of. You look like you just started five years ago, oh, uh, you know, 25, 26, oh. something like that. But uh, <laughs> but you've done so much. I, I believe you've been in Hollywood and uh, alive for more than 25 years. Long time. Welcome, Long time. by the way. Thank, Thank you for being you. here. Thanks for having me. Um, have you always been a redhead? I have. Okay. Yes. I'm a natural redhead. Obviously, when I was younger, my hair was a lot more fiery. But as I get older, it's kind of got a little more strawberry blonde. Yeah. Yeah. You have the blonde coming through. I mean, yeah. I, you know, this is I, such I a strong question to start color. with. Color. At least right now, I have not colored my hair, made it more red, to try to get back to that childhood thing in, in a couple of years. So whatever's, it's just natural right now. I, I might want to make it more red again, though, if I miss it. But yeah. All right. So you seem pretty uh, down to earth, given the fact of what you your career has been. You seem like a genuine, real person. I just met you um, uh, at an event a little while ago um, for the first time. And uh, and you're from a, a little town. Where are you from? Now? Yeah, In Missouri? I'm from, yes, I'm from East Lynn, Missouri, and it's population 150 people. I'm from Kansas. What? Population 2,000 people. So yes, it's we are, sort and of then neighbors. we have the same car too. How cool. does this like small town people at ending up in Hollywood, and then we have the same kind of Porsche and, and the same matte color that, you know, that is kind of so weird. random and rare. That was my entrance to Angelica is that she pulled up in her car, which you would think because we're from Midwest people that we would yes. have like a truck. Right. Or a pickup. Yes. Uh, but no, we do not. We have a different car, and maybe someday we'll show you a shot of that of yes. those cars, mm -hmm. and you can pick which one would you rather have. What's your interior of your car? What color is it? it it's black. Oh, What's so your interior? Red. Oh, now I like the red. I don't, yeah. It kind of shakes it up a little bit. Red's cool, black but people? the black's pretty great too. Enough about cars. No, but how <laughs> cool that you're from Kansas. I'm from Missouri. Yeah. And small towns. Small towns. When did and, you get out? How uh, did you move out? Yes. So I ended up going to UCLA for communications. So that was kind of my out of Why? getting out of that small town. I always wanted to um, go to Los Angeles. That was my dream kind of dest destination, if you will. So I thought, okay, this is my goal is to get into UCLA. And I used to watch um, Gilligan's Island. Okay. And I would see Ginger. Ginger yeah. Grant. Oh my goodness, I want to be Ginger Grant. She was red. This was too, right? yes. Okay. So that, you know, once I started watching those Gilligan Island episodes and seeing Ginger Grant, it kind of started, you know, getting my destination. Okay, this is where I need to go. She came from Hollywood. <laughs> As a kid, it was very, very impressionable to watch Gilligan's Island and and just to see how luxurious and um, beautiful she was. And I just wanted to emulate that as much as possible. So that was kind of my first, you know, um, person or actress, if you will, or celebrity that I kind of aspired to be or have a career. Uh, how old were you, though, when you first had that dream? What and did it? You you were watching Gilligan's Island, so yeah. So it must have been. I was probably six or seven okay. when I knew that I wanted to go into entertainment. You know, acting, singing, just anything and everything. And you it all. you you entered the Miss Teen yes. for Miss USA, right? Was uh, it yes. Miss USA? Yes, Miss okay. Teen USA. Okay. And how old were you? I think I was sixteen then. Yeah. Okay. Now, had you been performing? You obviously were taking singing lessons before this. Yeah. You were a singer. Yeah, I was in, you know, church choir and uh, choir at show choir at school. And then we went and, you know, uh, did all kinds of competitions, like state competitions with choir. And then I started doing musicals in school. And yeah. you're a dancer too, aren't you? 
Uh, I, I mean, I, I will do it, but I prefer to have backup dancers <laughs> to make me look good. Yeah, just leave the singing and acting to me and, and give me some backup dancers and I'm, I'm much better. <laughs> you have something about ballroom dancing here I, I was reading, right? Okay, so I, I booked an American Express commercial. Okay. And uh, what this, year is this? This was is this the good what? years of American Express because I had a Jerry Seinfeld one. Oh, okay. That I'm ran listening. for eight or nine years. Oh, wow! You got a really good, a good run on yeah. Amex. Did yours do Super Bowl? Yes, okay. started there actually. Yeah, and then they kept so it. So did mine. Now, okay. what what year? So is I what? want to say this was nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. Okay. Mine was the nineties as well. Somewhere yeah. around. Yeah. Okay. And and yeah, it was great when you know they're like, okay, it's going to run for Super Bowl. I, I was and then to watch it during Super Bowl, how exciting was that, right? Oh, yeah, to see that. Wait, so well, is that so what you started dancing? So no, but I think you got that um, ballroom dancing from that I said it was. It's in my bio that I was a ballroom dancing ingenue, like. Um, was Ginger, Fred Astaire and Ginger. They kind of did the commercial on a Fred Astaire and Ginger film. Oh, wow. And so they made a ballroom dancing scene. So I was ballroom dancing. It was even funnier because I was so much taller than him. Yeah. So it kind of made, you know, it was like a very community. Is that your commercial. favorite commercial of all time? I think definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they stick out. Like, I mean, I did, I did through my 20s, I did a bunch of commercials. Um, before I stopped, and so, but I mean, did you? Was it your? Did have you done commercials through your whole career? Obviously, you, uh, you've been so many things. So I think that's that's pretty much where the career started. Yeah. Is the commercial aspect? You okay. know, it was the modeling and commercials, and then from there, it kind of went into acting roles. Okay, so we won Miss Teen USA. Sorry, I find fa I find um, people's starts of stories so fascinating because it's like, you know, I think so many people who are watching this, um, there's so many people with dreams out there who who aspire to to accomplish, you know, just even a tenth of what you've done in your career. And uh, but ultimately, they always say, how did, how did you start? How do I start? How, where does it come from? So you're you're you become Miss Teen USA, which is a big deal. Um, well, no, it was Miss Missouri Teen. I'm sorry, Miss yes. Missouri Teen. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and which is still a big deal. Yeah, it's very cool. And you know who was um, Miss? I always find this interesting too. A little tidbit: when we went to the national pageant, you know, to to yeah. where they crowned Miss Teen USA, um, Lauren Sanchez was Miss New Mexico, who is now with. Jeff Bezos. Oh. And we were like this, you know, we just were like magnets because we kind of had similar personalities and and she was awesome then. And then now I see her and I'm like, good job, Lauren. Good, you know, way to go. But but it was just interesting that yeah, she was Miss New Mexico while it was Miss Missouri. Did you how <laughs> long was your relationship with Lauren? Did you like you know, we kept in touch a little while after that? It, it might have been just a few years. But always when you go to pageants, you have all the girls from the other states sign a t-shirt or sweatshirt. I still have the shirt that says the Miss, you know, Teen USA. And then she wrote something on there to me and marker. I had all the, the girls, right, and sign something. I still have that shirt after all the That's pretty. Years. Did you ever frame it? Did you put it in like a glass? No, but I need to do that. Yeah. Why haven't I done that? It takes time. It's like a... It takes time. It takes 50 years, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so you're you're uh, you're 16. You become Miss Missouri Teen or Miss Teen Missouri. I should know this. I'm actually in the judging circuit for Miss USA right yeah, now. Yeah, cool. But uh, uh, when you do, you, does that get you into modeling then? Like the the national modeling more or because so. coming from a small town as I know yeah, is you know there's there not was, a lot there of nothing, there pickings, there right? nothing for you know we didn't even have a musical department in our we had no drama department but didn't you have let's say I went up to Kansas City didn't you were you close to Kansas City where you could no, go over to I was eight yeah. hours and no I didn't ever eight hours from Kansas City it wasn't until I moved to Chicago my when I was 19 or when I was 18 yeah that I I started to try to figure it out and then I came here when I was 19. So, yep. so where did you go from? 
uh, 18th Street to Los Angeles, Westwood, <laughs> to go to you know UCLA. And then while I was at UCLA studying, I auditioned to be a backup singer in a group that was going to tour China. Uh -huh. And uh, just a backup singer, right? Nothing, no, no big, no big deal. But I ended up getting a contract, so I started going into rehearsals, and uh, I only went to school for it must have been a year and four months, and then went straight into rehearsals, and then started, you know, went to China to go on tour at nineteen or twenty. At uh, I was nineteen. Yeah. Wow. And so got dropped out of UCLA and went literally from, you know, a, a town with 150 people over to the neighboring town, which the high school was in. That was maybe 7,000 where the high school was. And then straight to, you know, UCLA, Westwood, and then to China, Beijing, where I was performing for 20,000 people from the University of Beijing a night. It, it, it was just so How crazy. long were you on that tour? Just for four months. Okay. Yeah. And but it was, was like a three, how big of, how many people were on the stage? Uh, there were four backup uh, dancers slash singers and then uh, the, the main artist. So there was like five of us on the stage at a time. And everything had to be approved by the government. So we had, we, you know, we're singing country songs, we're singing pop songs. And um, I remember that they had to, we had to then put leggings on once we arrived, um, our normal little country skirts, you know, with just our, our, our little cowboy boots and the country skirts, which wasn't sexy at all, mind you. Uh, the government then said you must wear leggings under those skirts, and it was just really interesting to. What colors were these? By the just way? white, white and red. Okay. You know, like that good old like. Right, American. Um, June Carter, you know, country style, like, you know, feel. Uh, and yeah, there was like, oh, you have to wear. They had to look at the um, lyrics of all the songs. They wanted to see all the words. Was it in English? Or they, it, I think we had to, or they had a translator. So we had to send the songs that oh, we're just singing, you know, this song and this song, and these are classics and nothing sexy. It was just really all American. Nothing here like, to look at. Nothing yeah, here to look at. You know, very, very tame. And they wanted to, to look at the lyrics. They wanted to see the, all the words, the songs, and then make us wear leggings. It was, it was just interesting, you know, to have to go through so much of their approval before we could even get on a stage in in the country period have you been back to china since i have been to hong kong since yes and japan since okay yeah i ended up going back to japan to actually model there for you know six months yeah yeah okay so you get you get off of that tour and then where do we go so i we we you're young, got you're an still, invitation. You're 19. Yes, we okay. got an invitation to perform at Universal Studios in Orlando. Yeah. There was a Miss Wine Tropic. There was a bunch of events going on around there, and they needed entertainment to go in between these events and and a, like a festival, if if you will, I think going on at Universal. So I went and we performed at Universal. And John Casablancas, who was the president of Elite, mm -hmm. the modeling agency, okay. was in the audience. So then he came up to me after the performance and said, you know, you should be modeling and would you like to be with Elite? So that's kind of how then when I got back to Los Angeles, I started working with Elite. Now, um, models you think are... How tall are models these days? Like for the runway, you have to be five nine, five ten. Yes, like that, I, I'm I'm five eight, five eight and a half. Um, so I, it's not like I was five nine, five ten, but I didn't do much runway. runway right. Then but like the I said, the commercial aspect. Oh, I was I was very commercial looking, so I started doing commercials. But generally, you know, models have a better career. I think you know, if you're at least five eight, um, and up. And if you want to do runway, it's good to be five nine and up. Yeah. So what is okay? So how fast does that catapult you into your whole modeling career? Um, and like, what kind of, um, uh, you know, is it like instantly or 
or does it take a while? Do you have to go out on a lot of, you know, uh, not auditions, I guess they're right. all different. Yeah, like uh, the ghost sees and the, yeah. <laughs> we used to call them ghost sees. I think it happened pretty quick. I don't know if that's normal, my, my timeline, if it's normal or not, but I think the fact that, you know, going from meeting the president of Elite and then just coming back to LA and then meeting the people that were at the LA office, because I never saw John Casablancas till I think I went to a visa many years later and then had a dinner with him and the president of elite in Paris and, you know, different, different from different elites all over the world. And then I, I, I got to have kind of a reunion with him. I never really saw him after that. So I was, I was kind of put in the hands of Los Angeles and their divisions. Um, but, but it went quickly because I, Ended up going to Japan to model for a bit. I went and stayed in Barcelona, Spain. I went to Milano, I went to Paris and did various things for a year and a half. But then when I came back to LA and actually had the commercial agent, who was also the commercial agent for Cameron Diaz, um, Robin, say, okay, I'm sending you out for commercials. Now that you're back in one place, so started going out for commercials. You're 20, 21 at this point? I, I'm tw yeah, 21, 20 and a half, 21. It was 21, yeah. 21, it was 21, yeah. Um, boom, I just started booking commercials and and all of that. And then I saw that Robin had sent Cameron to go audition for Jim Carrey for The Mask. And, and then Robin was, I mean, uh, Cameron, we had done some modeling jobs together. Yeah. I still have like the cool, like, you know, uh, of which you... those are probably not framed at all either. No, they're not. They're in a box <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> this is so bad. Okay. Note to sell. <laughs> David says, I need to get this stuff out of the garage <laughs> and I need to get it, Put it in somewhere. Place. Put it so it's not getting mold and musty. Anything that means anything right. to you that you, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, um, and then boom, she got mask and, and then Robin starts. And so I think we had a really good agent, you know, I think that yeah. definitely helps us to have a really good agent as well. And now what was your first acting role outside of a commercial? Yes. Yeah, so I went to a Super Bowl party. Um, my girlfriend who is came just to, to stay with me. She won the Miss Ford look of the year in New York. Um, her name was Monica Schneer and she just won the Ford look of the year. She's, she's like six feet tall. She's, she's stunning, stunning, amazing human came to Los Angeles and stayed with me because she had been in New York and was trying and she had a, a, a manager and she said, let's go to the Super Bowl party. It's at, um, John O'Hurley's house. He was on Seinfeld yeah. and, and Malibu said, Dan. Yeah, uh, my show. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah, sweetheart. And so I went to the Super Bowl party and then ended up meeting her manager. And then, you know, he said, I have an audition for you. It was, it was a Sunday, right? Super Bowl Sunday. I have an audition for you tomorrow, Monday. Uh, I said, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't want to get into acting yet. I want to you know, study some more and do modeling and, and commercials before I start acting. You know, I feel like I really need to study. I'm just not ready. Okay, but just go on this audition, please. You know, I think you're just perfect for it. It's a recurring role on Days of Our Lives. Uh, just, just, just do this, you know. Okay, okay, twist my arm. I went the next day. I, got, I think he's, he had faxed over the, the scene and the lines. I worked on it for like an hour. Now that was there a and, ton of lines yeah. from, you know, like from, for the so audition. Yeah. No, actually it wasn't too much. She, uh, she was a recurring role. So it wasn't too much, but it, it was at least a page, I would say, you know, a page and it may be a page and a half. So I worked on that when in the next day auditioned, they called him within an hour and they said, we're going to book her for days of our lives, just recurring. It could be three episodes, it could be five, six, but you know. So that's kind of how uh, the acting <laughs> started. Okay, so you're on yeah. Days of Our Lives recurring then. Do you like just yeah. go straight to work? You're 21, 21? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how do we like it, it now? Probably, yeah, I think 20, could be 22 now. 
um, did the days of our lives and I loved it. I enjoyed it so much. And I think it gave me confidence to not feel like, oh, I need to be in acting class before I audition. I was like, okay, I guess I can audition and do class at the same time. You know, why do I have to have this set? Oh, wait, you, you know? not had acting classes at all? I had just not you know i mean i've been doing musicals right. my whole I mean, life musicals and, are modeling and traveling and we we're kind of busy right so i hadn't really had a lot you know yeah. I, I i just felt like i i needed more okay you know i needed some more work to do more work on myself yeah so at that point i just kind of did go into classes but you know just as little as much as i could um, once a week day. and yeah, yeah every other week while i did the auditions um all right and so you know the burning question i'm sure that is on a million people's minds here is because you you were on baywatch for for a bit yeah like how when how how long had you been acting before oh, yeah. baywatch came up and or <laughs> you know how does that work how did you end up on baywatch of all things Good and question. or were you watching it at that because it was yeah, season i was few, right it, it was yeah. like you came in what I season did you season eight okay. and then came back was it three years later and we did a baywatch reunion movie and they they we, that was shot in hawaii so we were in hawaii for a while it was really cool sounds like you've had a really tough life up to this point <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, you know, sacrificing going to Shanghai and, and Barcelona and, um, you know, it's uh, all right. So I mean, it's all in perspective, <laughs> right? If you like to travel, it's growing it's, up in the Midwest with a small town. Um, uh, I don't want to ruin it by even delving into your, uh, you know, your family, because uh, it, it's such a perfect story right now. Um, all right. So. Uh, uh, so Baywatch comes in season eight, and is it a? Uh, did you had were you how old? Were you, and I don't want to know how old you were, but I mean, like, were you had you been in acting for a while? Yeah, so I think what twenty four now. Okay. It was, and Pamela had just left the show. Oh, okay. So they they could not replace Pamela, right? I mean, Pamela is a very tough act to follow, so they ended up hiring three of us girls for that so new new cast members when one panel like right. seasons 11 seasons of they watch to make something like that 10. Uh, okay. i think hawaii i think it was so season nine was in malibu then season 10 maybe you're right yes they did two seasons in hawaii so that would have been 11 seasons and then we did the baywatch hawaii uh movie in hawaii after that so yeah, let them see. Something. I mean, I I heard the story about Baywatch from Greg Bonin. Uh, oh, I had a meeting with him. Amazing. Yeah, like yeah. last year, I think I went to his house out there and. Oh and, yeah, Malibu. Yeah, it's unbelievable crazy. house. Yeah. Uh, but his story about how Baywatch ever came into existence is fascinating. From him being a lifeguard, and then he yeah. tried for ten years, you know, no knocking around Hollywood. Touched it. No one would touch the thing, which is just astounding. And, and even went on, I believe it was NBC, yeah, and you know, canceled. Boom! They're like, oh, this is terrible! What an awful show! And like, we believe in it. We believe in you, Baywatch. And then they ended up, you know, just getting it into syndication. It's funny to me. I wonder, like in the '90s, because this is the '90s. Yes, '90s of, like, were the best. Uh, Yeah, the '90s right. were good. Uh, the 90s. Uh, my my opening day in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I had a motorcycle and was on. I I I was an extra on Baywatch, and this is like early on. You know, in these, in it might have been the first season, second season. And it was down somewhere. Uh, that I had to just take the 405 and keep going. Okay. Somewhere cold, and it was, oh. and it was. It was overcast, and anyway, I end up. Uh, that was where I was going on day one of being in Los Angeles. Of which, I ended up getting uh, driving because I was late, okay. so I was trying to get down there, yeah. and uh, and then I got I got pulled over by the <laughs> highway patrol, uh, who were not nice in the nineties. Oh yeah, and they took yeah. my key, threw it, had me up against the back of what? of his car going on and then accused me of uh wrote me up for driving across the divider hit and run because i bounced off a car whoa 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 like whoa, all these things 
Yeah, that Are sent me to. Kidding? No, I'm not. It was it was the good old days of the Highway Patrol. Okay, this is like a story from so, a movie. I mean, yes. I hope that was my day one. Written. That was my connection to Baywatch. Thank no, I have never because you could, no one could even imagine this happening. Yeah, well, and to someone, you know, I mean, look how you look. You're so innocent. I know. Well, that's the oh, American boy. Is that crazy or what? <laughs> the funny thing, I'll just wrap because this story is yeah. not about my story. No, but, but I want to hear this. Tell another me more. day. Tell another me day. But, no, uh, tell me more. But I end up going before the judge because yes. to to kind of capsulize it, I had bounced off. I was late. Okay. Hit LA traffic. Yes. As we all know, it's yes. not nice. So I start driving between the cars. At, and again, I'm 19 you from can Kansas. do that. No, you can do it. Sure. Okay. But I had... It stopped, and so I like I had bounced off a guy's, you know, the your tanks on motorcycles, you yeah. know, kind of some. It hit a guy's car, didn't do any damage. Okay. However, it did bounce off the guy's. And car. you were able, as you were going ninety-five. No, no, I was not going. Damage? I was not going ninety-five. I was no. in between traffic. Okay, it was so like that, in, in oh, between the cars, okay, so you're so like twenty miles. Forty-five. Maybe twenty. Were you able to see the damage? I feel like this is getting turned around here. No, there was no damage because... Um, How do you know that? Well, because I got pulled over shortly later. Oh, but you did that, not that, stop that, to see the damage first. No, I stopped. Well, no. Yeah, but you didn't stop until... 100%. You were I deserve that one. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so when I go fast forward to the to the courthouse... Yes. Because I didn't have any money. <laughs> and they're like, uh, you know, uh, driving across the divider, hit and run, speeding, and all these things. Because there's no way I could be speeding. I was, like, in the middle of traffic. Right. Driving in between cars. And they're like, David A.R. White, step forward. And I'm like, hi. They're like, <laughs> you you're <did> David White? <laughs> <laughs> this, like, this. this guy, kid, kid straight from the farm. Yeah. Totally. Anyway, I got 440 40 hours of uh, service at the Venice no Boys Club. Way. Mm. My entrance to Hollywood is a little different than Angelica's. Yes, but I have had to do community <laughs> service as well for carrying a stun gun, oh. which, okay, so the, this is a funny story too. I'll make it really quick because we both have had community service. How many people can you, do you meet that have, oh, yeah, I, I had community service too. Yeah, what's up, right? Yeah, community service. I mean, look at us. We're from the Midwest. We're from small yeah. towns. We both have had to do community service, but, it's you know, we're like the whole American just, you know, just trying to be good and do good <laughs> in this world. How do we end up with community service? Yeah. Right. Um, but mine was I had just booked a show in Vegas. It was my opening night. I was headlining at the Lexor Hotel. I had a 50 foot billboard on the side of the hotel. It was on the top of taxis, you know, you name it. And I I, I was getting late to, and I missed I, I was getting And you were the headlining uh, singer. Correct? Yes. And yeah. and the MC of the show, wow. right? Show was not till 10 o'clock, but I had to, you know, be on the stage at 8:39. And I was planning on driving because I was actually moving to Vegas to do this show for a year and a half. I had all my costumes. I had, you know, all, everything and ran out of time. Okay, I had to book a flight out of Burbank. Oh, my gosh, to get there just to do the show. Well, I had a stun gun that was a, like a little cell phone. It, but it was a stun gun that I just kept with me because, you know, I had been mugged before when I was training for the Miss California USA pageant in San Bernardino at the Gold's Gym. And that's a whole other story. We're going to dig into that one yeah, later. Yeah, that's a whole other story. So I always carry like a stun gun or pepper spray after this incident. Well, I take it through security. Oh my gosh, you would have thought that I was, you know, like the worst, most evil criminal on the planet. Did they, Earth. Did they just... They did not arrest me, but they wrote me a ticket and I'm just thinking... Oh, okay, and and they confiscated the stun gun. Okay, big deal, but I didn't realize. Did it go that... through the yeah. the belt, and that's what went off. Yeah. <laughs> Did you so, get community service, or just yeah. a ticket? So, well, I didn't know that I could fight it because what the ticket says is that I knowingly 
took a stun gun through oh. airport security. Well, I didn't knowingly do that. Who would be stupid enough to do that unless you're just savage, right? I'm not that savage. I was just <laughs> unsavvy in that moment of just, I, and I was just like, I just want to get to my show. It's so important. It's my opening night of people coming to see You were me. literally, it was the, and it was opening night that you were doing yes. this. Wow. Yes. So, interesting. you know, they let me go through got to my show, went off without a hitch, but then I had to deal with this. So I- Can you tell your story about the stun gun day one of your show, like to the audience? No, but that would have been so good, right? Yeah. I think I was just so embarrassed that I this, I did something like that. You know, it was just so stupid. Um, anyway, whatever. So yeah, I did community service, but you know what I did is I worked for the Van Nuys Police Station because they gave you, they gave you oh, choices, see, that's right? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, I, like I want to work for them. Station. Yeah. Had you done Baywatch at this point? You had. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So where is it? They must have been thrilled to have. They were. They what was your character's Taylor, name again? Uh, Taylor Walsh. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Taylor, Le Lieutenant Taylor Walsh, oh, right? Lieutenant Taylor so Walsh. So Lieutenant Taylor Walsh at the Van Nuys Police Department. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want anyone to know. I don't, I never like for people to know. They who didn't I really know who you were? I, I don't Let's know. Believe. I don't know. I didn't advertise it. I just wanted to be invisible. I just wanted to do a good job. In between all of your pictures and signing autographs at the Bad Eyes uh, Police no, Station, no one knew who she was. I didn't do that. Did I you didn't. wear the suit when you were at the Bad Eyes? No, Police I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. No, but it, it was just such great um, character observation. It was just such great. I don't know. Did you have a stun gun with you? No. Uh, they didn't I give you that? Did not. No, they I gave you a sign on Ever take a stun gun or anything. I'm always, now I'm paranoid about pepper spray and all of that. Oh my gosh. I learned a very good lesson. All right. So how many hours did you get? 40. And what did you do? Well, I was with the Venice boys. Uh, the so, Venice. oh, cleanup, beach cleanup. No, no. What? Uh, in Venice, there's a boys club. Oh, cool. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Except What's a lot cool? of, a lot of those boys Gee, are, lots uh, of pee? Uh, yeah, like sure, but I mean, <laughs> it's more the uh, it's more the fact that I don't I think, think I, I just, uh, you know what they were they were good kids. It's kind of like going to the to the to the you know down to South Central and uh -huh. uh, and and hanging out with the boys. Uh -huh. See, I, I mean, I the high schoolers, yeah, doing that kind of stuff. It was good actually, but you know, yeah, I get I get Venice could be a whole other animal. It was a different deal, but I mean, you know, it's the the you know Kansas Missouri kid who yeah. says, hey, let's. Let's hang out at the Venice Boys Club, um, straight from. All right, so now on Baywatch, you have. Uh, I would imagine you you had your. I, I saw a clip, and if we can run this, you said uh, that you at one point were trying on Pamela's suit, right? Oh yeah, I ended up with her suit. Yes, yes. For actual for the show. Oh yeah, because oh, wow. it had her name. You know, with like the sharpie right. on the the tag, yeah. <laughs> and it and it well, that's they, you fit they, well. They, they send everything to dry cleaning. Yeah, every probably four days. And why buy a new suit when you have? I'm surprised she didn't take I, it with her though. You know why? It's because those were so specially cut and made yeah. that once, from what I understand from uh, Michael Burke, is that the original designers like that how the suit was made. I want to say was it. I can't remember the company, but it was harder than to get them to make more or they either stopped production. I forget. So those original, original, they, they just, those are special. Like they could Did you get to take the suit this. with you though? Yes. Okay. Now do we frame this suit? Yes. All right. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I and, got and where does this suit, <laughs> where does it, where does it hang in your house? <laughs> I have like, you know, an office. So I have yeah. some of my little memorabilia in my office is it, on the wall. Is it on the wall? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, did we little... sign the suit or did we like no, any we signage wanna, of it? No, I don't want to put anything. I don't know. I just, I didn't want to put. Do I you have a little placard at the bottom of it that says Angelica Bridges? No, I have not done that yet. It's okay. just the uh, encasement. I basically, here. my side job is memorabilia. I so can see I, that. Uh, you I basically first in this. Yes, I, I know exactly how all memorabilia is supposed to look and feel. Now, you know what? The funny thing about uh, memorabilia to, to me is that uh, 
I was on the evening shade when I was 19 with Burt Reynolds. That was my start. But I had to wait six months and go through Venice Boys Club and all that. Right, right. And I wasn't Angelica Bridges. Hang oh, out please. In the, but, but what I loved about Burt Reynolds, you would go into his dressing room and you would see all these pictures of all the stars. And he had all this other memorabilia stuff that would, would uh, be in his dressing room. Like smoking the band. And everything it's just was fascinating to go in there. And I was always so excited every single time he'd call me in or I got to sit with him and see. And I would just be sitting in there just, just, just be like, all oh, like see? a museum piece. It was like the Hollywood Museum. Yeah. I would have had ADHD like big yeah. time in there, you know, I, I, like totally. the exorcist. Walmart. And they rotated them every week. He would somebody every week, two weeks, somebody would come in and basically it, it, his his dressing room was about this size, actually. And he had a bar and he had he oh, had all kinds of it's Burt Reynolds. Yes. And uh, and every ounce of the wall was filled with something. Wow. So I kind of walked away from that at an early age going, oh, I should actually take pictures with people or I should try mm -hmm. to keep some stuff. Now, I still was... haven't. It's still in boxes and, and my thing, too. I don't believe I've it. done something. You've done but, them. OK, good. But yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, all right. So Baywatch uh, swimsuit gets up there. Oh, Did mm -hmm. you have another outfit as well? Um, as a lieutenant, you had a of, top outfit, right? I kind of had. Um... It was like a navy blue pencil skirt with a white, uh, you know, the... the We're like, going to show a picture of this right now. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the white, you know, the button down the collar. Um, yeah, that was my lieutenant. And did I got you to wear did you, did you, do you wear Did you, after the show ended, uh, did I, you wear it out very often? I did not take that costume with me, no. Do you want Only another one? Do. do you want us to make you one? Oh, that that would kind of be really. I have my cool. people in the memorabilia. Yeah, <laughs> could they put Lieutenant Walsh? On, By the way, if you're the... out there and you're listening and you have a memorabilia, uh, or you can make yes, or One Angelica, contact us. David exactly. White. Five five five. Okay, well that's pretty cool. Um, how how. What happened to your character at the end? How did we leave Babe? Don't know. It didn't really show how I left it. It was the did next. You, was it David Hasselhoff? Did you like tick him off or something? Uh, no, David was. Oh my did he throw a phone at you? Amazing. He would come on set and be like, oh, you know, like this singing about the wall or I, I don't know. He was just like a. You said singing about the wall. Yeah, I think it was the Berlin about? Wall. So oh. sometimes he would sing his song about the wall coming down in Berlin and just Oh, it was just he would he's so charismatic that, you know, he, it was like a hurricane when he would walk on set. You're Did like, you guys oh, ever do a duet? David's here. <laughs> you know, what's that huge uh, tornado that just flipped my hair? Flew in. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah, he's he's amazing. He's larger than life. So, no, I, I love David. I, I enjoyed him so much. And I think um, I came on as lieutenant. He became captain at Baywatch. And then the following year, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't even know. I don't even know if I really watched the following season, but, but they never they never brought up, because they brought on, I think, three more new people the next Was it season a, as well. When you, yeah. when you, when you find out um, uh, you're no longer coming back, okay, are you on to something else? I'd imagine you had many yes. other things lined up. Yeah. So did, uh -huh. they even, did, it, did you even care or... Was it kind of like, no worries, whatever. Yes, I have was, many other things. It was the craziest thing because sometimes when you do a show and you think, oh, I, I'm, I can do better than this. I don't want to get typecast. You know how people complain mm -hmm. they're given something so amazing and they're going to, and they still aren't happy. Well, that's, I was kind of like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to get typecast or this or that. And because I was on such a roll. And yeah. after the show starts airing in the U.S., then it goes over to Europe. So it it's airs in 142 co countries, but it takes two or three years to Biggest roll show out. in the world, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of living on that, you're living on that, that no, wave yeah. for three years. Then after three years, it's just started, it finishes airing and everyone's seeing it in different countries and your, your voice is dubbed. Then they brought us back for the Fox reunion movie. So I was like, oh, this is just going and going and going. So even though it was only one season, 
it felt like it went on for four or five years with the continuation. Um, but, but yeah, I was ready to, I was like, oh, I want to do this now and I want to do something else. So I, I was excited about moving on. And, but then when I look back now, I thought, oh, why are you so excited? You should have milked it and wanted to stay and, and tried to, you know, keep, keep your position and, and enjoyed it more because it's been such a, a legendary, iconic show. But at the time when you're young and you're just on that high, you think you can, you know, roll on and, and do so many more cool shows, which I did. Yeah. And you have a but, whole, but yeah, yeah, but I mean, but, but Listen. I'm just saying, but, but, you know, Baywatch, it's still the, the coolest. The iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, so they're telling us that we have. To I know. We were so just, I, we're I, I would love to have you back them. again because I still have all of your other shows and your whole career to go through. But if you have to uh, leave people with something, you know, for all the now you work in schools as well. Like you're on your way to go direct. Uh, yeah, like four direct. musicals or something. Yes, it's an it's a nonprofit that I'm working with, and um, we're doing four musicals. Uh, for inner, I would Venice, say inner the Venice Boys Club. No, no, no. Oh. It's it's immature, but schools that don't really get the theater and the the programs, you know, the art programs okay. as as they should. Um, we're we're going in to you know give them this experience of being able to do musicals and singing and dancing and performing. Okay, so uh, you have to tell the people out there listening. Um, one thing about the secret of your success what do we think that is and or how can someone follow in your footsteps and do what you've done um, if they have those similar dreams well i probably sound like um your publicist <laughs> roger i don't want to sound too cliche but i think the the one thing that i take with me is, you know, I'm from a small town. I didn't have any connections in Hollywood. I really worked my way and started from the bottom and, and just, you know, met everyone after I moved to California. So I would just say that, you know, dream big because there is no dream that I think anyone is not capable of, of conquering. And if you are persistent and you're positive and mm, you're a good person because, uh, you know, obviously you you come out uh, you know, from small town and and you work hard and you're a good person and treat other people well, I notice those people continuously want to work with you. They'll bring me back or they've kept. And I think that was a big, maybe someone was more beautiful or talented or, or, or better than me by far in so many categories. But I think people enjoyed working with me because I was I was easy to work with and I was I was, you know, kind to everyone always. I never um, um, you know, took advantage of that. So that's one of the things is like keep dreaming. No dream is too big. Um, aspire, work hard and um, and then just, you know, treat people, treat people well, because it does come back to you. Aww. All right. So do you like mm -hmm. people following you on social media? Sure. And yes. what, uh, where do we go? Oh, is it just Angelica Bridges? Yeah, or is Angelica it... Bridges. Yes. Yes. Nice. Angelica, what a pleasure thank to have you. Thank, thank you so much. much. You're so sweet. Like, oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah really. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have mutual <laughs> friends and I'm, I'm glad yes. that I got to know you. So, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, all right, guys. Well, um, for this episode, many other episodes, uh, tune in from the White House on all kinds of social platforms from everything from YouTube, Spotify, iHeart, Apple, everywhere else. Thank you, God bless you, and uh, thanks for watching.